You're watching Cinepolitics with me, Faisal Ahmed. Coming up on today's show, we'll be looking at Zero Dark Thirty, the controversial film by Oscar-winning director Catherine Bigelow and Mark Boll. Now, Zero Dark Thirty centers around the CIA's hunt for Osama bin Laden, headed by CIA agent Maya. Maya is played by Jessica Chastain, who has already scooped a Golden Globe for her portrayal of an intelligence officer. Now, Academy Award nominations aren't the only thing catapulting Zero Dark Thirty into the headlines. Some critics have accused the film of promoting torture as a tool to get results. The Obama administration has also come into fire for supposedly sharing classified information with Bigelow and Boll. And now the US Senate Intelligence Committee is reviewing all contact between the CIA and the filmmakers to see if these allegations are true. So how involved were the CIA in forming the plot? And is Bigelow guilty of promoting torture? Let's take a look. Can I be honest with you? I am bad news. I'm not your friend. I'm not going to help you. I'm going to break you. Any questions? I want to make something absolutely clear. If you thought there was some working group coming to the rescue, well, I want you to know that you're wrong. This is it. There's nobody else hidden away on some other floor. There is just us. And we are failing. You really believe this story? Osama bin Laden? Yeah. What part convinced you? Her confidence. If you're right, the whole world's gonna win in on this. You will never find him. He is one of the disappeared ones. Joining me today to discuss Zero Dark Thirty, we have Chris Bambury, journalist and commentator, and Emerson Ford, resident film critic at Colourful Radio. Welcome to the show, both of you. Now, Zero Dark Thirty has stirred up a lot of emotion and has divided opinion amongst many people. But Emerson, as a piece of filmmaking, how does this film fare for you? It's a good piece of filmmaking. It's a long piece of filmmaking. I mean, for the casual viewer, you know, the person who goes to the cinema every Saturday, I think it's a bit, it wouldn't, it's not that sort of kind of film. Uh, for someone who's kind of a bit more involved, a bit more political, it's an interesting look at the whole kind of history of the war on terror and the hunt for bin Laden. Um, you can see why it's award kind of worthy. It, sh it shows America its best light, you know, mm -hmm. literally, we're going to get this man, we're going to do this thing, we, we see the CIA doing their operations and such. Um, for me, it's not my type of film. It's not the best film I've seen this year, and it wouldn't be something I would, if I was a voting member of the Academy, mm -hmm. I would be putting my vote as the best picture I've seen this year. And a few members have commented about mm. this. Mm. But Chris, I want to bring you in here. Do you think this is another history lesson from Hollywood? No, this isn't history. This is the best of Hollywood in the sense that it's a great action film, white knuckle ride, but it's also the worst of Hollywood. I mean, this is liberal Hollywood and it's producing a film which rests on a moral premise which I find very questionable. We'll come on to the question of torture, mm -hmm. but I think the, the whole moral premise of it is, is that really Osama bin Laden had to be killed. He had to be killed by any means necessary and therefore what it took, you had to take, do what you had to get him. And therefore, that's the premise of the film. And once you buy into that premise that Obama, Osama bin Laden had to be killed, illegally killed as it turned mm -hmm. out, but mm -hmm. then by any means necessary, then actually everything else flows from it. And I think it fails in a sense of the film. And I think it fails for a number of reasons. First of all, I don't think it explores the central character Maya at all. Mm -hmm. And secondly, I think it does not give any voice to the victims of the torture, the mm -hmm. Muslims essentially, mm -hmm. who are either seen as uh, people who have been broken or as kind of hateful figures. And 
I think there's a parallel here with the film Argo in the sense that these people don't get a voice, but when you see them in many ways as sort of someone as enraged uh, haters of mm -hmm. the West, mm -hmm. irrational, uh, and there's no ex explanation for why that is. Uh, it's a very interesting scene of the, when Maya, the central character, lands in Pakistan. She's asked what she thinks of Pakistan, and she says it's mucked up. It's not yeah. quite the word she uses. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's no explanation why Pakistan, a country that seems very sinister in the film, inhabited mm. by dangerous people, a dangerous country, there's no explanation why it's been mucked up. Could it be the extension of the war from Afghanistan into Pakistan? Could it be America's support mm -hmm. for the Pakistan military? None of that. So the victims of the war, the victims of the torture, don't get a voice in this film. Now, what I found interesting was I, when I watched this and I'm looking at you know, the CIA's operation, I couldn't help but draw parallels to Argo, and I mm. think, Chris, you might agree. But what do we learn about the CIA's operations in Pakistan, you know, in foreign territory? Well, literally, they're doing this, this kind of mission it kind of almost illegally in the sense that literally yeah. they've gone into this second this second country they've actually taken people from the country itself uh, literally without any knowledge from the people the Pakistani intelligence service and the second thing is they don't even rate the people they're supposed to be working with the it, uh, what's it the ISI yeah. they yeah. just they just see them as Stooges. Not, stooges, you know. But we see this constantly in mm. films. I, I mean, I don't know, Chris, mm. what, what you think, that mm. the CIA, wherever they're portrayed, foreign intelligence of other countries is always seen as inadequate. Mm. Yeah, and uh, this is against the background, a constant background of these terror attacks. So it's very racy. So you're getting attacks in London, attempted mm. attack in the World Trade Center, mm. and all the way through. And the CIA, the comparison is interesting because, it, as you say, with the, the Muslim uh, captives, but also with the other uh, uh, the supposed allies in the war on terror, in an all this, the CIA are the good guys in this mm. film. Mm -hmm. They're the queen cut guys. So mm. we're asked to sympathise with Maya because of her anguish over torture, which she gets over, by the way, mm. yeah, very, very quickly. quickly. Yeah. We're asked to <laughs> sympathise with Dan, her accomplice in this, because he's an intelligent man with a PhD and he mm. likes yeah. animals, mm. uh, all of this, you know. Mm. These are the people we're actually allowed to sympathise with, but they're the people doing the illegal detention. They're mm. the people doing the rendition and the torture. And at the end of it, you feel the moral compass is somehow wrong in this film. Mm. I know we've seen recent comparisons with Homeland, but we'll come back to those. Let's pause there. Let's go to our next clip where we see a scene from the film as well as looking at behind the scenes at the torture sequence. <laughs> Why are there gate guards there? We talked about this. No one is supposed to be there when my source arrives. You might have spooked him already. Well, procedures only work if we follow them every time. This is different. I'm sorry, I can't explain, but it's for a good cause. Look, I'm responsible for everybody's safety, okay? It's not just about you. I just need them to go away for a minute. You can search him as soon as he gets here. The sheik, man. Come on. Oh. I'm gonna keep you awake. Okay, so towards the end, we've just seen a clip of Dan with a detainee. And, you know, we, we see some lines from the film, and he's saying to one of them, can I be honest with you, I'm, a bad, I'm bad news, I'm not your friend, I'm not going to help you, I'm going to break you any questions. So, yes, a lot of debate has stirred up about whether this film is endorsing slash promoting torture. Chris, what do you think? I think the answer is, is as, you, as I said earlier, if you accept the premise of the film that Bin Laden has to be got and killed by any means necessary, and the the whole centre of the film is based on the actually what is a lie, that the information that, that the, the Americans got to get to Bin Laden was got from torture of detainees, which is not true mm. and has been challenged. But if you accept all that, then you end up almost accepting that the torture is necessary to get it. And you're invited to do this because of Maya's anguish over the torture, then are getting over it. And our hours of looking at these video clips of torture, our own participation in it. Mm. And actually, I think it does end up, despite the mm. denials of the makers of this film, the claim that they're anti-torture, well, that yes, there's no effort to do that. I think it does end up by saying Catherine that Bigelow discussion. has said, and um, those of us who work in the arts know that depiction is not endorsement. Torture, she added, is part of the story we could not ignore. So, Emerson, is mm. there a risk that you almost increase the public's tolerance towards torture? I think you do. I mean, literally in this film, it's kind of kind of implicit the fact that uh, literally at the end of the day, end of the yeah. day, it's torture that got the information that yeah. gets Bin Laden. If you if you think of that and you're you're sitting at home in in the Midwest of America, you think to yourself, well, seeing this film, literally torture is a good thing because literally it gets the bad guys in the end. Um, the the funny thing is, the strange thing is, is this film is supposedly a pro Obama film. 
But when you look at it, and in the film, in fact, in the film, they even use a clip where they say, yeah. show um, Obama saying, well, we, we don't torture in America, it's un-American. So by definition, are the people in the film un-American? The, the, way, the, the way that it's portrayed in the film, they're not. They're literally American heroes because yeah. they, they get the job done. They're upholding they're American values. values. Yeah, they get the job done when, you know, other, other people wouldn't do it. They wouldn't go to these means, you know what I mean? I the British, so. you know, mm. British and other foreign, they're, they're softies because they wouldn't do this type of thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there might be a spoiler alert here oh, for viewers. Is, but um, at the beginning of the film, you know, yeah. we see, well, we hear an audio mm. of 9-11. Um, yeah. And then this is followed by the torture scenes. Do mm. you think that's almost been set up as a payback? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah. And it's so, it's so, it's kind of really obvious, yeah. You get this, you hear this anguish. These are real, literally, these are real telephone conversations you're hearing. It's, and it's really stark because it opens in, in black. You know, it's black. You hear, the, all you can hear is this audio mm. of people on phone calls from the World Trade Center. It's towers. quite powerful. It's quite powerful. And then but, you just cut to this torture scene and it's like, it's it's not even like, it's not even a fade to black, it's a cut, a deliberate But it cut. is the central premise of the film, which mm. is that the, what happened in 9-11, terrible as it was, mm -hmm. yeah. is the worst thing that's ever happened it's in history. Yeah. You know, it is the worst thing that's happened to, mm. to America, but it's the worst mm. thing in human history. And mm. therefore, mm. it flows from that, that really mm. these are the most terrible people on earth. Mm. And as I say, there's never any attempt to explain Obviously, why 9-11 might have happened, why people might have been driven to do that. I'm not justifying mm -hmm. the action, but there's no attempt to explain why people might hate America. You know, it's just, and then it's portrayed, if you hate America, it's mm. irrational. Mm -hmm. Whereas, and again, similar in Argo, where actually yeah. there is a rationality to it. You might reject it, but there mm. is a rationality to it. But would you, literally, if you're a filmmaker and a producer, remember this is a film, yeah? yeah. It, literally, it's, it's something that's it's been made for money, yeah? Do you want to sell an argument I'm just saying this is just an argument to say, which says the other person's side. Well, I think I, well, I think the problem with the film is, and here it goes, mm. it is history. They are making a history, yeah. but they're also mm. making something which is political. So you have real characters in it. You have yeah. Obama, as you mm. mentioned. You have William Panetta, the defence secretary, mm. portrayed by James Gon 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 in it. Yeah. In it. Mm. Therefore, it is actually presenting a story which is supposedly factual. And there is a well, central a premise of it which is wrong. That, mm. you know, people, like you said, you know, mm. in middle America, people could take this as yeah. facts. As history. Oh, yeah. as history. Yeah. Though yeah. the film does open mm. by, you know, them saying that the film is based on first-hand accounts of actual events. Mm. And then if we kind of go back to a, a book that was released by uh, one of the Navy SEALs involved yep. mm. last year. I mean, the events that we see depicted in the film mm. and the events that the um, the SEAL, the Navy SEAL wrote about, mm. the two aren't really adding up. So I yeah. don't know, it's slightly dubious. But, but, but let's pause there. Let's move on to our next clip where we see Maya briefing the team before the raid on Osama bin Laden's compound. You'll notice the stealth panels similar to what we use on the B-2. The rotaries have been muffled with decibel killers. It's slower in a Black Hawk, lacks the offense and the stability, but it can hide. So, uh, hey, excuse me, but what do we, what do we need this for in, in Libya? I mean, Gaddafi's anti-air is virtually non-existent. Maya, you want to brief him? There are two narratives about the location of Osama bin Laden. The one that you're most familiar with is that UBL is hiding in a cave in the tribal areas, that he's surrounded by a large contingent of loyal fighters. But that narrative is pre-9-11 understanding of UBL. The second narrative is that he's living in a city. Living in a city with multiple points of egress and entry, access to communications, so that he can keep in touch with the organization. You can't run a global network of interconnected cells from a cave. Okay, so we see Maya briefing the uh, the team of the Navy SEALs involved in you know the alleged killing of Osama bin Laden. Now, I read something interesting by a XCI agent, Lindsay Moran, who'd questioned why the White House hadn't released visual evidence of you know Osama bin Laden, and I think a lot of people have. Also, the thing, and yes, the White House says because they don't want to radicalize people further, but she made an interesting point, and this is just her opinion. She said that the events depicted in Zero Dark Thirty, in her opinion, are for, far more likely to radicalize terrorists. Chris, what do you think about this? I think it's, it's interesting because what they try to show is it's a, some sort of heroic event, by the mm -hmm. way, the assault on the, the compound. So, this is the, the finale of the film, and it's not to show the plot. But I think it's interesting because.
because what actually it's trying to suggest is it's almost like a fair fight. Oh, yeah. Whereas, yeah. whereas I think you what actually you were saying there is the other Navy SEAL says this was a summary execution, mm -hmm. right? And there wasn't a fight. Yeah. He was, the guy was just taken out. Mm -hmm. And the Americans didn't want to bring him to trial. They'd rejected that option mm -hmm. and they'd gone through it all. So actually what this film is doing, in my opinion, is again distorting history by sort of portraying it as being some sort of heroic deed with which medals should be given, uh, given out, mm -hmm. when in fact it was a summary execution. And I think actually as well, in a way, what this film does by just endorsing that in the end, the execution of Bin Laden. We should be aware that the war on terror is maybe conducted in a different way through drone attacks, mm. which involves taking out people, often civilians, by, uh, by, uh, by the way. So I think that the, it's, it's opening the door to an endorsement of this new strategy that it's okay, we're going for summary executions, mm -hmm. clean cut executions, but in fact, it's not quite true. And I think that's why, actually, Washington didn't want the thing to come out. They didn't want it to be shown that we just went in and killed this guy. Mm. But, you know, that we rejected any idea of bringing him to justice. Mm. We weren't going to do it. We dumped his body at sea. That's what happened mm. and that's what they don't really talk about. Now there's been huge outcry not only about the torture scenes but you know obviously Congress aren't very happy and we've you know heard the likes of John McCain mm. um, saying that you know, torture, the information they obtained from torture didn't lead to the capture of Osama bin Laden mm. and you know they're reviewing how involved the CIA were with this plot. Chris do you think they were involved in forming the plot line? Uh, well, this film got cooperation from mm -hmm. the CIA and the White House, so it got the green light from the White House, mm -hmm. and I think people must be uh, quite amazed at the reaction that some of these people have turned on her, because actually, I think that she got the approval for it, but it is based, as you said, in what is a, a, a different account, the mm -hmm. official account, and actually I think probably the truthful account is they got this information from someone as far back as 2004, it and wasn't got it. from torture, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. They then went back to it and they got, uh, they got it, mm -hmm. and I think one of the things that's missing from the film, it comes out, is that uh, well, it does come out actually, and one guy, one guy says when he's been with rendition to Israel and he mm. says ask me a question and more or less says I'll yeah. tell you anything mm. is that people faced with torture will tell anything, anything to yeah. stop the torture mm. and in this film it's just taken for granted that what they're telling is absolutely reliable yeah. Yeah. whereas if you were under torture you would say anything to get, uh, get, out of that, get out of that situation not to be confined in the little box that the first uh, suspect is confined mm. in and so on so I think that it's, it's all quite debatable this Emerson, why do you think Congress are so up in arms about this film? Oh, literally, it's got, it's got White House approval, this film has. Literally, um, Bigelow and Ball, who wrote the film, actually spoke to White House, spoke to a senior White House official about the film. And literally, what I think the problem is, yeah, I think they, want, they, they were expecting a kind of more, how can I say, a more kind of kid version of this mm -hmm. film, yeah. you know, whereby you wouldn't see all the kind of talk, you wouldn't, definitely wouldn't have seen torture on in the film. Because those scenes are gruesome. Yeah, those yeah. scenes are really gruesome. I mean, literally, if you've not seen torture, if you've not, if you've not seen waterboarding, you've only read about waterboarding, yeah. see this film because you actually get to see what waterboarding is all about yeah. and how you can actually see how people actually die. It is actually do, do, witchery you, you know what I mean? It's literally amazing how they do it. Yeah. Um, so you can understand why Congress are up in arms about it. They expected to see a film which would have literally whitewashed that kind of thing aspect. Out what of it. I find really interesting mm -hmm. is that if you know a filmmaker, a director, and a scriptwriter mm -hmm. are called in front of Congress, yeah. I mean, what does that say about America? You know, the land that preaches on about freedom of speech. It, I'm just mm -hmm. finding that a little hard to kind of take in, Chris. Mm -hmm. Well, they just produced new legislation which permits uh, propaganda to be actually broadcast inside America. It's quite interesting. This was prohibited mm -hmm. uh, inside America. And the media was supposed to not broadcast, and they've changed it. Oh. So inside the United States, it's now legitimate to do, uh, to, uh, to do this. So mm. I think you have to watch what's coming out of Hollywood now with some attention, because mm. uh, and what the problem with part with with uh, th this film and indeed with Argo, and I keep making the comparison, mm. they do remind me a little bit of those. Reagan era films mm. about Vietnam, where mm. suddenly the Americans are the victims yeah. in Vietnam, mm. and they're even the heroes yeah. and the winners in Vietnam. Mm. And there was a kind of quite a conscious effort to turn that round in order to overcome the defeat that America had suffered. suffered. Mm. I guess even with Maya, we're supposed it. to sympathise with this yeah. woman who's dedicated her never told, whole life never told to this anything operation. about Maya, yeah. apart from but the fact gonna, she's a killer. We're mm. going to come back. Mm. We're going to go to our final clip where we see more scenes from Maya's character. Third floor, northeast corner. You don't think she's a little young for the hard stuff? Washington says she's a killer. You're in luck. I got you one-on-one -on -one with Farage. Seriously? Thank don't you. Don't you thank me until you hear what I want for it. I want you to take care of all this before your favorite subject. Jill. 
you know, having watched Homeland, I mm -hmm. couldn't help but draw comparisons when I saw Zero Dark Thirty. I mean, the char Maya's character played by Jessica Chastain, it just didn't work for me. Mm. I found Claire Dane slightly more convincing. I found Jessica Chastain a bit wooden. I know mm. I'm probably going to get you know, <laughs> criticised for this, <laughs> yeah. but Emerson, what are your thoughts? I must admit, the problem with Maya and the, her character is that you get there's nothing to her. Mm. All she does, she's like a robot. She's literally, it's like w w watching Westworld. She just, she's f fully focused. She's going to do this thing. And you don't get to know anything about her. Anything, she, you know, you, does, you know, something, just a little bit. Does she smile? Does she joke? Does she have a laugh? Nothing like that at all. It's I really think we kind learned of, more about Dan than we did yeah. about Maya. About, her, about yeah. Maya. And it's amazing. She's the central character in this film and you don't get to, to know anything about her. You know, they, even, even she even tortures someone and you kind of get to know something a little about him. You know I mean? When, they, yeah. you know, he, he's, eating, he's eating, he's getting some, uh, a meal and he's, he's been broken in a, in a sense. You get to know this little character. If it's only for half a minute but you don't get to no, next to know nothing about her and you're quite right it is she's kind of wooden in but that sense the, yeah. the central the central thing of the film is we're supposed to identify with well, her uh, yeah. and her anguish which yeah. you see right at the beginning i mean it's not giving the story away the very first torture sequence mm. she's yeah. clearly upset worried mm. about it mm. but she's going to participate in it because mm -hmm. she's asked by dan do you want to put on a, a, a disguise and mm. she says no yeah. which is a kind of statement that i'm going to do this thing mm. and mm. therefore her, whatever the anguish which she actually sympathize with she's mm. going to do this and you're Right, she's driven by this determination to get Bin Laden, mm. and nothing's going to get in her way. And she mm. participates in torture, she watches the torture, and that's why at the end of the film, I think you can't really warm to her. Yeah, you can't mm. empathise with her at all because literally you just don't know who she is. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? In most films, you kind of know who the person is. Even if it's a thriller, you kind of empathise. There's some family, there's some sort of something. She doesn't phone home, she doesn't do no, anything. Do. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, mm. you're 10 years in you're in these X countries, Y countries, you don't have a boyfriend. All right, you might not have a boyfriend. You don't go out or anything. It's just like... Just well, she did us. pick up a Golden Globe for her performance. Mm. However, mm. the Oscars, you know, just around the corner, mm. Catherine Bigelow has been left out of the um, Best Directors category. Mm. Do you think that's something to do with the uh, controversy surrounding the torturesses? I know, you know some actors mm. like Martin no, Sheen, no, no, no. we've yeah. had uh, an Academy uh, member called uh, David Clennon who said, um, this yeah. film promotes the acceptance of the crime of torture as a legitimate weapon in America's so-called war on terror, and he's asked for people to vote consciously. I and mean, what do you think? It's, it's interesting, with the, with the Academy, literally, because she's in a director's category, it's directors who vote for her in the initial round, so everybody gets to vote this round, but the original nomination to pronounce it to director's category. It's interesting. Um, she was award she was nominated for the uh, Directors Guild Award, yeah, which is all the directors, the kind of union for that. But the directors who are Academy members didn't seem to do so. So I'm assuming it has something to do with the fact the whole controversy with the film, because it's supposedly a liberal film, but right wingers seem to like it. Or Republicans don't seem to like it. Hmm. Well I guess we'll see in the next coming weeks what hmm. the event you know what the outcomes will be of the uh, review and uh, what will happen at the Oscars. But mm. we have run out of time, so we're going to have to stop there. Thank you to both my guests, Chris and Emerson, and of course to all of you at home. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can do so by emailing us at cinepolitics at presstv.co.uk or you can join our Facebook fan page. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>